Okay, let's talk about everyone's favorite math topic, and of course, that is fractions. Actually, when it comes to fractions, a lot of students don't want to be uh, hassled with fractions, like, oh, anything but fractions. And one of those topics about fractions they don't want to deal with is the LCD, the lowest common denominator. So uh, a lot of you out there that can look at these two fractions and uh, probably reason through and tell me what the LCD is. As a matter of fact, if you know the answer, put that into the comment section. I'm going to show you the answer here in one second. But here is something that I really want you to think about. If you had to teach someone how to find the LCD and what the LCD is, could you do that? Okay, that's a real good test of how well you understand something. So even though you might be able to get the answer here uh, with these two fractions, what if I gave you these fractions right here? Let's say 3 over uh, 1408 plus 2 over 176. So let's suppose these were the denominators. This would be much more challenging of a problem. Matter of fact, a lot of you might be kind of looking at me like this. I'm like, hey, I don't want to do that. Just give me the easy problems. Well, it doesn't work that way. And um, if you've been confused about the LCD, stick around for a couple of minutes. We're going to clear up that confusion in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades, and I'm telling you right now, you can be successful in mathematics, but what you need is great math instruction. Hopefully you have an excellent math teacher, but what you need is great math instruction. That's clear, understandable, and comprehensive. So if you're at the middle school, high school, or even college level in terms of mathematics, check out my Math Help program. You can find a link to it in the description of this video. I promise it will help you out big time. Also, if you happen to be preparing for any sort of uh, special exam or test that has mathematics on it, there's a ton of them out there. Things like the GED, SAT, ACT, ASVAB, maybe a teacher certification exam. I have a ton of test prep courses that can help you out. If you homeschool, check out my award-winning uh, homeschool program uh, for middle and high school mathematics. Uh, really proud of uh, what we've done in our homeschooling program this year. Now, if you don't have great math notes, you need to start improving your note-taking because this is tremendously important to be successful in mathematics. But in the meantime, uh, I'm going to leave links to my notes in the description of this video. Now, if this video helps you out, I want you to uh, really consider helping me out by liking it and subscribing it. Okay, so what is the LCD or the lowest common denominator? We're not going to add these fractions. I'm just looking for the LCD. What is the LCD given these denominators? Let's go ahead and take a look at the answer. And the answer is 90. The lowest common denominator is 90. So if you answer 90, well, let me go ahead and give you a nice little happy face and A plus, a 100%, and a few stars so you can have an extra special day. But here's the bonus question, okay? What is the LCD? Okay, and you kind of give me a, a series of steps or a recipe or formula. How do you find the LCD? Of course, uh, some of you could be like, well, I just knew the answer was 90. Um, that's one thing, okay? So if you got the answer right, that's great. But again, if I gave you some sort of problem like this, could you duplicate your success in finding the LCD? But let's go ahead and get into this right now. Okay, so here's the problem. one ninth plus 7 over uh, 30, 7 thirtieths. We want to add these uh, fractions, okay? So when you're dealing with fractions in terms of adding and subtracting fractions, the deal is this. You have to have the same denominator. So here, 9 and 30 are obviously not the same. So I'm not going to be able to add these fractions. Um, of course, if this was a subtraction problem, same situation. I can't do add or subtract uh, two fractions if they don't have the same denominator. So I'm going to have to do some work on this. And of course, that involves finding the lowest common denominator. But let's take a look at a more basic problem here just to kind of drive that point home. So here's 4 sevenths plus 1 7. So here the denominators are uh, precisely in common. So 7 and 7 are the same. So we don't have to find the lowest common denominator because they have uh, de their denominators here are uh, common, right? So how do we add fractions when we already have the same denominator? Pretty simple. So here, oh, I can uh, add these fractions because the denominators are the same. You just write one of those denominators. In this case, it's 7 and then add or subtract the respective numerators. So this is going to be 4 plus 1. Uh, that will be our numerator. Of course, that would be 5 over 7 or 5 sevenths. All right, so that's why we're doing this. We're um, uh, trying to uh, kind of get that skill down, that uh, finding the LCD um, 
is the first component if you don't have common denominators. You can't add or subtract fractions if you don't have the same denominator. You're going to have to get that LCD, and then you're going to have to do some additional things. We're not going to talk about all the other uh, parts of um, what you need to do to add and subtract fractions when you don't have the same denominator. We're only focusing in on the LCD. I'll give you some suggestions on uh, the rest of what you need to know about fractions here in a second, but let's go ahead and continue on with uh, learning about the LCD. Okay, so we have 1 9th plus 7 thirtieths. Obviously, these two uh, denominators are not common, okay? So we have a little bit of a situation, but don't worry. What we're going to do is find the uh, lowest common denominator, okay? So any two numbers, there's always going to be numbers they have in common. And a matter of fact, 9 and 30 have infinitely many denominators that they have in common. But we don't want like, you know, all the denominators, what we want is the lowest common denominator, okay? So we there's all sorts of numbers that could work here in terms of finding a common denominator. What we're looking for is the lowest common denominator. So let's go ahead and uh, think of it this way. A good kind of like uh, way of a lot of students think about the LCD, right? And I think it's a pretty good way to think about it as well, at least conceptually, is the lowest common denominator uh, is the lowest number that both of these numbers can divide into evenly without a remainder. So you're kind of thinking to yourself, okay, I'm looking for a number such that uh, both 9 and 30 can divide into without a remainder. Okay, so for example, if you had 1 third plus 2 fifths, what's the LCD here? Probably all of you know that, oh, it's LCD is 15. And that's pretty easy, but you're thinking to yourself, what's the lowest number that both 3 and 5 can divide into without having a remainder. Of course, that would be 15. Now, uh, 3 and 5 also divide into 30 without a remainder, but that's not the lowest number, right? We want the lowest number, and of course, that is the lowest common denominator. But, you know, just thinking about that, you're like, okay, what is the lowest number? How do you find that? Well, that's what we're going to talk about right now. Okay, so here's our denominators, 9 and 30. So what you want to do to find the lowest common denominator is you want to factor the respective denominators into their prime factor. So what does that mean? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at 9. So you're going to factor 9. Uh, so 9 can be factored as 3 times 3. 1 is always a prime factor. We don't have to write that down. But 3 is a prime number. So we're going to circle that. And 3 over here is also a prime number. So we can write 9 is equal to 3 squared. Okay, so you want to write... Uh, these uh, denominators right here um, in terms of their prime factors. And we'd like to use powers like this as well. And I'll show you why here in a second. Okay, so hopefully this makes sense to you and hopefully you understand how to factor. So let's go ahead and factor 30. So there's different ways we could factor 30, 6 and 5, 2 and 15. You'll still come up to uh, the same prime factors. So I'm going to say, okay, 3 times 10 is 30. So I'm looking at my factors here. Which one are um, which of these is prime? Well, three is prime. So just circle uh, the prime a prime factor when you reached it when you're factoring. This is called a factor tree again. So we'll circle this. Is 10 prime? No, 10 is not. 10 is not prime. So we can continue to factor 10 into two and five. So this is a prime number. This is a prime number. This is a prime number. We can no longer factor anymore. So we circle our prime factors. So 30 is equal to 3 times 2 times 5, 3 times 2 times 5. And uh, so that's how we'll express 30. And then, of course, we have 9 over here. All right, so once you've done that work, getting the LCD is pretty easy. So here is the formula to find the lowest common denominator. What we need to do is uh, represent all the prime factors between these two numbers. So we're looking at uh, 9's prime factor, which is, of course, 3 squared, and 30 uh, 30's prime factors, and here they are right there. So what we need to do is write each prime factor, and we're going to multiply each prime, um, all the prime factors that we found between the two numbers, okay? So it's going to be a product, and the factor of that product is going to be all these little prime factors. So, for example, I'm going to have to have 5, as that's a prime factor, so I need to have that in my list here. I need to have a 2, and then I have a 3 here, and I have a 3 uh, squared here, and this is where you have to really pay attention. So this 3 is 3 to the first, okay? 
This one over here is 3 squared. So which 3 do we represent as a prime factor? It's always the one with the highest power. Okay, so if you have 3 to the 4th, let's say over here, and you have 3 squared here, you always pick the one with the highest power, and we put that in to our little uh, product for the LCD. So let's go ahead and just actually do this. So here I have 3 squared. Okay, so then I need a 2 and I need a 5. And there you go. So now I'm going to multiply all these together so we can see 3 squared is 9. 2 times 5 is 10. So 9 times 10 is 90. That is the LCD. That's the lowest number that both 9 and 30 can go into. So there you go. If you remember how to do this, you're going to be in excellent shape to handle um, not only more difficult arithmetic problems like this, okay, right here, but in algebra as well. You need to know how to find LCD. You need to understand these steps when you're dealing with algebraic expressions that involve variables. It's basically the same concept. So anyways, hopefully this video helped you out. And if that is the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And let me give you some additional suggestions when it comes to fractions. One, I have a ton of additional videos on my YouTube uh, channel about fractions, but in, in all uh, type of things about fractions, how to add, subtract, multiply, divide, how to reduce fractions, how to find LCD, all that kind of good stuff. But if you want my like best formal instruction, I would direct you towards two courses. One, I have a math foundations course. Uh, you can all you can find all these courses at my math help program. Just follow the link in the description. So I would recommend that course and maybe my pre-algebra course as well. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.